What's up guys, Scott Protagonist here. Today, I will be doing a deck profile on Yuga's Dragon World Draw Deity deck from the brand new Climax Booster, Golden Gaga. Since the release of Golden Gaga, my team has been doing a lot of research on different variants of Dragots. With much success, we have created the Magic Gaga, which we brought to Malaysia and made it to finals during regionals. And Katana World Gaga, which will be reviewed in the future, has performed exceptionally well during local tournaments. So with Gaga's amazing ability to be splashed into all worlds, the new Dragon engine unlocks a whole new dimension to deck building. I have built this deck according to Yuga's in the final episode of Ace, while properly fine-tuning it to be as competitive as it can get, so that you can win like the Ace of games. The deck plays a huge variety of Gagas from different worlds, so that you can abuse Raging Mode, an uncounterable quadruple attacking 3 critical penetrating unit. So let's get into the deck profile. So for the buddy, we'll be playing Deity Gargantua Dragon. He is the main reason why Gaga can be splashed into all worlds. You may use this card with all flags, and if it's your buddy, you may use Dragon Sponsor from all worlds. So the main reason why I use DT Gargantua Dragon as my buddy is because it allows you to use Gagas from different worlds. It's pretty self-explanatory, and you gotta use it as buddy. So first up, we play 4 copies of DT Gargantua Dragon. He's the most important monster of the deck. This unit allows you to use Dragos from different worlds, making the deck extremely versatile. And is one of the main engines of the deck because of his Shinji Evo, the only Shinji Evo currently available in the English Body Fight series. Its ability to revert its form is also very very powerful, potentially allowing you to do 3 damage just for a pay 1 gauge. During your turn, call this card from a soul of a Dragon by paying its core cost. So this is very very powerful because whichever Dragon you G Evo into after attacking, so let's say you G Evo to Sonic Mode and swing to your opponents, you can actually pay 1 gauge and revert it back and do an extra attack. Even though you won't be able to DG Evo again, you will be able to swing extra 3 to opponents, which is awesome. DG Evo is a very powerful G Evo which activates once per turn. So at the end of the battle of this card, draw a card. And you can call up to one Dragon Monster from your hand without paying its core cost onto this unit. And it's considered a G Evo, so you'll be able to trigger effects such as Sonic Mode when it's caught by G Evo. And did you know if your opponent were to attack this unit, and you cast a Dragon Shield, the, the attack is nullified, it's still considered in battle and you'll be able to swing G Evo and draw an extra card. That's something really cool and lots of people doesn't know. So you will be able to plus once per turn, even during your opponent's attacks. It's an amazing card and overall this is the main reason why Dragos are top tier right now. Next up is 3 copies of the tank, Sonic Mode. Sonic Mode is one of the most important G evils in the deck just because it allows you to draw during your opponent's turn. This deck is properly balanced so that you'll be able to G evo and plus during your opponent's turn and your turn. And it's very important to balance the amount of attacking monsters and defensive monsters. This card is a really good all-rounder because even during your offensive turn, you can always call this unit to gain extra 2 hand size and you never know what you can G-Evo into those hand cards. And it gives you additional attack when you G-Evo, so it's pretty good overall. So its core cost is paying 2 gauge and put the top card of deck in this. So, its main ability is this card on the field cannot be returned to hand and its abilities cannot be nullified by opponent's card effect. And the main reason why we use this card is, when this card enters field, you gain 2 life. Then, if it enters by a G-Evo, you can draw 2 cards. Having the option to draw 2 cards during your opponent's turn is huge because you will potentially draw into defensive cards which helps prolong your life. And also he has a whopping tanky defense, counter attack and move, so he will be able to block some heavy attacks during your opponent's turn. I currently play 3 copies, if you want to play 4 to bump up the defense, it's alright because personally I think the draw 2 just helps cover its weaknesses. Next up, 3 copies of Space Gaga aka Galaxy Braver Quasar. This card is one of the best G Evos in Golden Gaga, with its flexibility to be useful during your turn or your opponent's turn. So Ian's core cost of 3 gauge is slightly steeper than most of Gaga's and putting a top card of the deck into it. So, when this card enters the field by G Evo, look at the top 4 cards of the deck, put one of them into your hand and the rest into your top of the deck in any order. So this card when it enters the field, immediately becomes a dare barrack, allowing you to check top 4 to pick one to your hand and rearranging them. So here's how it becomes offensive. Counter ability, during your attack phase, Drop the top card of the deck. If your card is a monster, put it into your hand and for this turn, this card gains penetrate and triple attack. That is the main reason why the G Evo skill exists, to rearrange the top. Because you check top 4, add one spell to your hand, rearrange a monster on top so that you can gain the penetrate and triple attack. This card is very powerful during your turn or your opponent's turn because even during your opponent's turn, you were to G Evo into him using your cards, you will still be able to look at top 4 and pick one card among them and add it to your hand. Allowing you to plus 1 is still good because when you G Evo, your opponent's attack miss and therefore it's considered a negate. And you're getting extra soul because you're stacking on top of another Gaga, so you'll be boosting up your defenses. Quasar also consistently deals 9 damage with his triple attack 3 criticals. And overall, Quasar has just such great balance between offense and defense, and that's why I play him at 3. Now, the final staple in most of Gaga decks is 2 copies of Gargantua Kaiser. This is a Legend World promo from the Box Stopper. 
and it allows you to fetch out the most important card of the deck, which is your weapon. So here's a core cost of 3 gauge once again, a very steep cost, and putting a top card of the deck in this. So, all items on the field cannot be destroyed by opponent's card effect, which is pretty neat. But his main ability is when this card enters the field, by normal core or G Evo, equip up to one item from the deck by paying its quick cost. Then, if it's entered by G Evo, for this turn, this card and that card gain us 30k attack power and one critical. He is such a huge monster. Think about it, his 10k sets gain additional 30k which makes him a 40k attack power. The main reason why we play this card is not only for the item search, it is also to beat down max dragons. This card alone makes a weapon at itself above 30k, which means you'll be able to beat through Max Dragon's huge defense. And its art is really sick as well. And this card is very important in deck because it allows you to search out for this card, which grants you an additional G Evo. This is what I usually do. I'll attack with Gaga, Shin G Evo, draw one card, and due to its ability, I can search for my deck one weapon and equip it by paying Gage. This weapon becomes 4 crit due to its G Evo, and it becomes 4 crit, and it gains 30k. So now it's a 36k and a 40k, and it has double attack, 4 crit, 4 crit, 4 crit. That's a total of 12 damage. Now you can use Gas Able to G Evo one more time into any monster, giving you additional triple attack. So think about it, it's a really simple combo which allows you to do a lot of attacks. This deck, in my opinion, is the most aggressive among the 3 Gaga decks available. So yeah, 2 copies of Legend because it helps you against Max Dragon matchup and it allows you to pull off some really cool combos. Now we're gonna go through many Gagas of the deck. The main reason why we play many Gagas is because of Raging Mode. For different Gagas in the drop zone, you can gain different abilities. And the most important ability is actually just to have three different Gagas so that you'll be able to gain one critical. The anti-counter is nice to have, but most of the times when I go into him, I will already run out of negate and I will be able to swing them to death with 12 criticals. So we play different Gagas just because of different name and world, and yeah, let's go through them one by one. Right, first off, we have one copy of Raging Mode. So it is a new Gaga from the Secret Pack, and it's the most aggressive Gaga we have. With a little bit of setup, this guy is able to bring out the OTKs. So he has a 12 2 6 stats, which makes it very very powerful, one of the highest attacking Gagas right now. It has a core cost of 3 gauge and putting the top card of deck in this. So when this card enters by G Evo for this turn, this card gains quadruple attack, so you attack 4 times. Second ability, if you have 3 or more different drug gods on your drop zone, this card gains additional 1 critical. Then if you have 5 or more, your opponent cannot use counters during the turn that this card is attacking alone. So if you have 5 different Gagas in the drop zone, which is pretty dang easy in this deck, your opponent can't even use Dew Gain, he can't activate any counter abilities, which means they can't use any Dragon Shields, and that's huge. Because they will have to eat a guaranteed 12 critical from this monster alone. This card also has Penetrate, so it's pretty useful against wall decks, since not a lot of Gagas have Penetrate, and the only Penetrating Gagas are actually the Space Gaga and the Dragon World Raging Mode. Next is one copy of Fuma Dragon, one of my favourite Gagas, and Katana Gaga. And the reason why I still use him is because he's still using Yuga's deck, Fuma Dragon is the cheapest Gaga to call alongside Deity Gargantua Dragon. For a cost of 1 gauge and putting 1 card from the drop zone into his soul, it's definitely worth calling him. Also, the main reason why I play him is because of its ability to call, put a card from a drop zone into his soul, which means even if you do not have this card in your hand and you already have one set up in the drop zone due to his previous turn being destroyed, you can call Fuma Dragon and put it in your soul. Then later on, Fuma Dragon attacks, spawn all those tokens. You can basically just pay on gauge to evolve, to revert back, then you can continue doing your combos. So, in a way, this guy is actually used to fetch him back to the drop zone while giving you extra attacks, which is pretty neat. That's the main reason why I use him, one copy. And also, it's because he's a katana world, and I do want to play a bit of different worlds in the deck. And yet, one copy is fine. Next, we play one copy of the secret pack Darkness Dragon World Gaga. It's really cool to see Gaga traveling to different worlds to learn the art of that world. So, in this case, this Gaga allows you to do a lot of destruction. So, its cover is put a card from the drop zone into his soul and pay 2 gauge. So once again, you'll be able to fetch back your God Gaga so that you'll be able to continue your combos. But its main ability is, when this card enters the field, destroy a card on your opponent's field. But if it enters by G Evo, destroy all cards on your opponent's field and deal 1 damage to your opponent for each card destroyed. This ability is very, very, very powerful and it's very useful against matchups such as Dimension Dragons because once you actually perform a board wipe on them, they pretty much lose everything. Most of the Dimension Dragon spells require you to have a D Dragon on the field. If you do not, they are unable to activate. You gain Dimension Alteration will be stuck in the opponent's hand and they will lose the game. So this card is a great counter to Dimension Dragons which is a huge meta call right now. And also dealing the extra damage to bring your opponent closer to lethal is very nice to have. You could even G Evo during your opponent's turn to soften their attacks by blowing up their bot and dealing damage to them. And I play one copy because it's a Darkness Dragon World, giving me more different world count. Now one copy of Magic Gaga from the Secret Pack. This is the new Blade Mage, Blade Mage New. So core cost, paying 3 gauge and put the top card of deck in this. So this card ablaze on the field cannot be nullified by opponent's card effect. So that's something nice to have against certain matchups. 
when this card enters the field, return a card from your opponent's field to their hand. And if it's entered by G Evo, return all cards on your opponent's field and gain one life for each card returned. It has inbuilt double attack, which makes it pretty useful. And most importantly, this card is insane against Dimension Dragons. The main reason being, it bounces back all cards on opponent's field, so it doesn't get destroyed. So cards like Agonia won't be able to trigger, they won't be able to plus and draw any defensive options. And if Dimension Dragon does not have any cards on their field, they won't be able to trigger any cards. So by bot wiping them, by bouncing back onto their hand, you will be able to safely finish them off. So it's similar to Darkness Gaga, but in a way, this is actually more safe because um, there are a lot of cards that cannot be destroyed nowadays. Especially if you're fighting against Lost World, they went to Lost World, this card will actually save you. Vanity Hearts Destroyer cannot be destroyed, but it still can be bounced by Blade Mage. So if Vanity were to attack any of my Gagas, I can just G Evo onto it and just bounce back at their whole field and they have to end their battle phase. So this is the reason why Blade Mage is pretty useful in the deck and I still play one copy. And also it's a magic world, so it increases the different world count. Now, the last Gaga of the deck is one copy of Galling Mode. Galling Mode is such an amazing card and is used by Yuga all the time against Ranma. Reason why being, it is another amazing card to fight against the dragons. It has a decent stats of 737. When this card attacks, you can choose and use one of the following abilities. So you can either destroy a card of opponent's field, deal one damage to your opponent, or drop one of the opponent's gauge. So most of the time in the anime, you always see Yuga trying to destroy Ranma's gauge so that he won't be able to go Lost World. Another way to destroy the dragons is to actually activate its destruction ability. When you attack once and if you're sold G Evo, you will be able to destroy 3 cards. And most of the time, the average number of cards on a D Dragon field is 3 cards. So if you were to attack with this card, you can destroy all their cards on the field and they no longer have any cards on the field. So it kind of works like the Blade Mage. Then you G Evo is something else and beat down for game. And it also can push for game since you'll be able to deal at 3 extra burn damage to your opponent. So it potentially, this is kind of like a 6 crit loose. And yeah, I kind of got this from BCS final, World Finals uh, as commentator. So I want to thank Bushu for this card. Very nice card overall, and I'm glad I finally get to use this card. This card is also pretty good against Bloodsack because you'll be able to destroy a card on your bonus field, so you can target the Bloodsack monster 3 times and destroy your souls. You got really use this a lot in the anime, and I decided to play one copy of it because it's such a useful card. We only play one type of size 1 in the deck, which is 4 copies of a Yugadra. It is a very very important unit in the deck because it allows you to search the deck for your God Gaga, which is your main winning image. So when this card enters the field, you may discard one card if you do, Put up to one DT Guardian Dragon or DT Dragon Tribe item from your deck into your hand. So it's very useful, even if you've got Gaga already, you can search out your Chi Evo item, which is a very, very powerful item in my opinion. It's pre broken and it just improves the deck consistency overall. Its second ability is also very powerful. When a Dragon Monster on your field attacks alone, it attacks your opponent and all their monsters instead. This ability is bought by Azidahaka, first form, because its ability to attack all monsters on the field opponent is pretty dang good. So, one example I'm gonna give you you have this on your field, you attack this. This ability triggers and you attack 1, 2, 3, 4. You destroy everything. Even though he has a center covered, the effect spe specifies that you attack the monsters and the opponent itself. So in total, you attack 1, 2, 3, 4. So it's really powerful because it gives you bot control. For the spells, we play 4 copies of Emperor Dragon Shield. This card is from the Triple Punisher Dragon World set and it's very, very powerful for certain reasons. You may only cast this card during an attack on your opponent's turn and if you have a DDT on the field, so it's counter ability, nullify the attack. Then if you have Dragon on a field, you can charge 2 gauge and gain 2 life. That is like a super dragon shield. And one of the most important reasons why this card is paid is because even if you have a monster in the center, you can use this dragon shield to gain 2 extra life and 2 extra gauge. Refilling your gauge is very important because gauge extends your play. Keep that in mind when playing your deck, that gauge extends your plays. So overall, it's such a great dragon shield. It is the best Dragon Shield right now, and I highly recommend 4 because it replenishes your gauge and gives you extra life for survivability. Next is 4 copy of Gar Hylan. This card is used a lot by Yuga during the matchup with Eden. With its ability to gain 4 life, you'll be able to escape a lot of ridiculous burn damage, and also to turbo gauge show that you'll extend your place. So, Cascots, put a DT Dragon Tribe from your field into the drop zone, so it could be your items, or any Dragon DT Tribe set spells and monsters. So it's very useful because it gives you extra life or extra gauge, depending on the situation. So we play 4 copies because gauge is very important and life points for extra survivability. Next up is 3 copies of Dragon Shine from BT1. So it has a cast cost of 1 life, choose and use 1 on following abilities, you can only cast it once per turn. So either search your deck for 1 DDT item or add it to your hand, or put up the 2 Dragon DDT trap monsters with different names from a drop zone into your hand. So most of the time I use it for the second ability which is to add back 2 different Dragots. Because it is very important to have a lot of different dragons on your field for G Evo, 
with this deck, you will be G Evo so much, it will drive you out of your mind. And if you don't have any Dragos in your hands, it's pretty sad because you won't be able to G Evo even though you have cards like these, which gives you a free G Evo once per turn. So yeah, uh, you want to, you definitely want to replenish your hands with Dragos during your turn. And if you really do need a weapon, you can also search it up. So three copies because it is such a great card. Next up, three copies of Gar Oracle. Cast cost one gauge, draw two cards, and if a dragon on a field, gain two extra life. Which is nice because you get a nice one with two extra life. Why not? Three copies to speed up your deck. Now, the best G Evo spell. Three copies of Radiant Combat of Deities to Glory. So you can use this card in all flex. So it has card cost of one gauge, counter ability, G Evo. Co op to one DT monster with Gargantua in his name on top of a dragon monster on your field without paying its card cost. And for this turn, that card gains with extra 5k attack and 5k defense. You may only cut this card once per turn. Being able to salvage any Dragot to G Evo on 2 is amazing because you might not have a lot of Gargas in your hand and you being able to fetch them from the drop zone is just too good. And also it gives you a bonus stats of 5k attack, 5k defense, which means during your turn or opponent's turn, you definitely benefit from those. The reason why I really like this card is because it extends your place. During your turn, you could go for extra attacks. During your opponent's turn, if your opponent were to destroy a monster, you could actually counter and they'll miss target. I'll evolve them to Sonic mode and draw extra cards in my hand. So potentially paying one gauge to draw extra cards and gaining extra so it's just too dang good. And also surpri some surprise tactics such as calling any of these from the drop zone will also wreck your opponent's gameplay. So for example, playing against DD, when they go into battle phase, you just cast one of these cards and they pretty much end their turn with no ability to farm or defend themselves. So this is the reason why I like this card, it really extends your play and gives you lots of options from the drop zone. Next is 2 copy of the classic Gargantua mode switch. So it's quite similar to this card, but this card actually gives you extra bonus and a call from drop zone, which is great because this card allows you to 2 box from the drop zone, while this card costs Dragots from the hand. Now we play 2 copies of Dragots Bar. You may hear me saying this card a lot in my previous deck profiles, Reason why being this card is one of the MVP in the meta right now, with its ability to remove all soul and destroy cards on your opponent's field, it deserves such an amazing card to have. Next up, we play two copies of the generic card, Recovery Veil. The main reason why, because it allows me to charge gauge. Also, this is very useful against certain matchups such as God Punks, because if your hand card will be dropped by your opponent's card effect, you may review this card and pay one life. If you do, your hand cards can be dropped by that effect. And even if you do not play against deck that has those kind of discard effects, it has second ability, which is a counter ability. Choose and use one of following two abilities. Either charge two gauge, which is really good because charging gauge extends our plays. And secondly, for this turn, the next damage dealt to you by attacks you will be reduced to zero. So yeah, it's kind of like a negate for free. Or otherwise, you charge two gauge to you, which is equally awesome. And also because generic is a world, which allow us to play the next card. One copy of Red Thunder Emperor Awakening. You guys that, aka Gao Mikado. So the main reason why we use this card is because we have a lot of different worlds in this deck. As you guys can see, there's tons of different ones in this deck. So this card is actually pretty much life, and it allows you to fetch back any card from the drop zone, which is pretty dang useful. Its ability is charge one gauge and gain one life. Then, if you have three or more different world card in your drop zone, which happens most of the time, you can put up to one card from your drop zone into your hand. If you have six or more, draw a card. And yeah, we play more than six different worlds in the deck, which allows me to draw that one single card sometimes, which is nice. So we play one copy of Red Thunder Emperor Awakening as tech, because it allows us to fully utilize the different world mechanics. For the items, we play two copies of the brand new Gaga Saber from Golden Gaga. So it is one of the best weapons that Gaga have right now. It could cost a 1 gauge, counter ability G Evo. So even if you were to fail to draw into your base form Gaga, you'll still be able to G Evo onto other monsters as long as you have this item on the field. So G Evo, choose a Dragon Monster on your field and pay 1 gauge. If you do, call a Dragon Monster from your hand on top of that card without paying its core cost. Then you may put this card from your field into the soul. So, you can use this G Evo ability without putting your soul, and you could put it into your soul if you want to, or you could just maintain it so that during your opponent's turn, you can still use this G Evo ability. The other weapon we play in the deck is one copy of Gakris. It's very useful against matchup that has a lot of destruction. Equip cost of 1 gauge and 1 life. If you have a Dragon Monster on your field, this card, the weapon, and all Dragon on your field gains a 4k attack power, they cannot be destroyed and their abilities cannot be nullified. So this card alone is very important to fight against the Magic World matchup because they won't be able to destroy any of your cards. So most of the time against those destructive matchups, I actually equip this because this card alone shuts down a lot of your opponent's counter control plays. And that one copy can be searched out anytime, which is awesome. For the impact, we play one copy of Gargantua Buster Break. This card is really good because it allows you to plus a lot. You may only cast this card if you have on your field. Cards cost 3 gauge, you gain 3 life, draw 3 cards, then destroy all cards on your opponent's field and deal 3 damage to your opponent. So the cost of 3 gauge, you'll be able to plus so much and control your opponent by wrecking their board. And it also has the Dragon Attribute which counts as a different count for this ability. 
because he has a dragon attribute in the drop zone. So as long as this card is in the drop zone, you can also use it to fuel for this anti-counter effect. This won't be a Yuga deck without the Shin Gargantua Punisher. You may only cast this card if your opponent is 5 life or less, neither you or your opponent have a monster in the center, and you have a drag up monster on your field. So by paying only 2 gauge, you will deal a whopping 5 damage, which is half your opponent's life. This card cannot be nullified and its damage cannot be reduced. So this is a classic Mikado family impact, and one copy because it's just such an amazing impact. And also it has a drag up attribute, which means you'll be able to fuel for Gargantua Raging Mode effect. I hope you guys enjoyed my deck profile of Yuga's Draw Deity deck. Comment down below which of Yuga's deck you would like to see next. And also, if you're looking for decks like these, support me by checking out my online shop www.cutprotagonist.com. Links in the description box down below. We mail worldwide right to your doorstep. So till next time, keep on buddy fighting!